We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to Tip of the Week, building the Afforda plane. This week, we're going to keep on working on the landing gear. We're even going to get a wheel installed. So let's get to it. And for a quick break, I thought we would answer a question that has come in from a number of viewers. And the question is, can you please weigh your project as you go along? And the answer is no thanks. The reason being, weights, numbers can be very misleading and they confuse the issue. Weights are useful here when you can compare it to something. For example, if I told you my weight, you could immediately compare my weight to your weight. That's another known weight. So as far as weighing our project, I am going to weigh a whole bunch of things that's going to be very useful. Why? Because we can compare it to something else and say, hey, can we make it lighter? Because our goal, our challenge here is always to make this machine lighter. So for example, when we get into our wheels, we will weigh the wheels. Why? Because if you can come up with another wheel that serves the purpose and is lighter, that means you're going to have more weight left over for things like the payload or the engine, something like that. Another thing we are going to weigh is the landing gear. A lot of people have come up with some very ingenious type landing gear to replace the ones that are in the plans, but oftentimes I see that they kind of brush aside the important criteria of does it weigh more than what the plans call for. So if you have a great landing gear that can take up shock and do all these things, make sure you weigh it because we're going to see if it increases based on what we're putting on or decreases it. So we will weigh the landing gear. We are not going to weigh the fuselage. That's an example of something that we can't replace. We don't have an alternate fuselage to put in place and say, hey, this one is lighter, let's go with that. If you have an alternate fuselage, that's fine, but that's not part of our project here. We're going to build the plants. You obviously can weigh fasteners, right? Some of you that have asked, can I substitute a rivet for a bolt? Well, you can weigh a bolt and multiply it times the number of bolts we have, weigh a rivet, and see what the weight savings would be. Of course, that would be a crazy idea because if you're interested in the integrity of the aircraft and don't want it to fall apart, you'll stick with bolts. But any item you think you can substitute, yes, you can weigh and see if it makes it lighter, but be very careful you do so at your own risk. So we will be weighing things as we go. One more quick thing, something we will weigh is the wing. Do we have an alternate wing? Well, kind of. When it comes to the wing, we're going to cover it with fabric. There's different weights of fabric we can use. And then a big uh, weight element that comes at the very end is when you cover that fabric with coatings and paints and whatnot. So by establishing a baseline of the wing without its covering and coatings, we can see what the impact of our coatings are. So for example, if we find out that after we paint, coat and paint everything, uh, it weighs X number of pounds, well, we know that we can reduce that by half by putting on half as many coats, something like that. So thank you for the questions about weighing things. We will weigh things when they make sense and serve a useful purpose. Back to building. In preparation for working on our landing gear, we want to clear off a piece of table of our workbench, and we also want to get a new piece of craft paper and lay it out approximately two feet by about five feet should be more than enough. And we're going to use this to lay out our landing gear legs and get the geometry, geometry right. <laughs> 
Our first step is to go get our landing cross tube and be sure to mark a center, especially on the bottom. We're going to place this up at the top and we're going to draw a line along the bottom. That way if we work on this we can always put it back by lining it up with our line on the paper and the same with the other components. That way no matter how much we mess things up we can go back to where we're supposed to be. So we got the center here and we're going to draw a line across and then we'll continue drawing. Now here's my center line and I've marked it on the paper also along with the line underneath. I drew another line down here at the bottom all the way across that is parallel to this line and 15 inches down. Check your plans, but the bottom of the axle, which is what this line represents, should be 15 inches below the bottom of our cross landing tube. And notice I've drawn the center line down to intersect it, so we also have a center down there. A good rusty right angle square helps you make these drawings, so use whatever tools and rulers are at your disposal. We're going to create an axle tube which will sit on top of this line and we'll always be able to keep it centered left and right by using these marks. Another mark we need is also located along that bottom line and that's the one that's right here at 19 and a half inches from the center going over we need an intersection line and likewise on the other side 19 and a half inches from our center line we want an intersection line here. The reason that line is important is because that is going to be the intersection of our gear tube which will go from this point up to the point up there. So we do need that. In fact, I highly recommend at this time that you place a point directly at the bottom of looking through the holes of the lower bracket. In other words, right here and put a point right below because that will be the connection point for our gear tube. And the same thing with the bracket on the other side. A point directly down below here on the paper. Now draw a line that connects the point at the top and the point at the bottom. and then do the same on the other side. The next step then is to draw a line on either side of the center line. What this allows us to have is an outline of where the tube is going to be located. So since it's going to be a one inch tube I drew two lines just a half inch on either side of our center line and do that for both sides also. Now let's talk about getting our axles in place. I cut my axle to 45 inches, check your plans. Now the plans call for inch and an eighth at 58 thousandths wall. I'm not going to use one and an eighth, I'm going to use seven eighths that's the outer diameter of the tube. I got that approved by Dave the designer because we're trying to save weight. We have an ultralight so we're going to be on the light side compared to having a large engine and going way overweight. So the 7th 8th axle will be just fine and will save a little bit of weight on the landing gear. I placed a center line, maybe a little hard to see there, because I measured carefully on both directions and found the center 
and that center line then can sit right on the center line that we marked down there. And of course this line is the bottom of the axle tube. So we always know exactly where that is to rest when we measure things out. Now I should say that we need to line this axle with another tube inside. Now because I have a 7 8 inch axle, the next size down that will fit is a 3 quarters. So this 3 quarters tube will go inside and I will simply slip it inside. And if you have any trouble getting it in, it's a matter of cleaning off the burrs, but will fit inside nicely. Also cut this to the exact same length. So this will end up going in flush at both ends. And the reason we do that, because you might say, well, if you wanted a thicker axle, why didn't you just start out with a thicker wall tube? Turns out that the principles and laws of physics are such that when it comes to bending and strength, a lot of that load is transferred to the outer surface. So with a single tube, we have an outer surface and an inner surface. By sleeving it with another tube, we now have four surfaces. So the bending is actually more going to be resisted by sleeving than it is to have a single mono tube of the same thickness. Kind of interesting how that works. Our next job is to think about adding the tube that's going to go from inside our stainless steel U-bracket all the way down to the axle. Now, the way we connect it, it's pretty obvious up here, we use a bolt like we've done before, right through the tube. But down here, we're gonna have two tubes come together. So we're going to need to create some gussets. Check your plans, this is made out of 90 thou, 90 thousandths aluminum, a little bit thinner than the sheet we've been working with. And the important thing with these is, if you notice, once you've made them, they should match very nicely the angle, actually that's my center line right there, the angle between the bottom axle and the center of the uh, center line of the connecting tube. And what will happen is this will go on top of both tubes and also underneath both tubes. So the tubes will be sandwiched between two of these, identical size, and we'll drill holes that will match the tubes coming in both directions. So our next step is to create four of these gussets because without them we can't really connect our tubes together. And the first step is to measure your angle here because you don't want to just copy what's in the book if it's not accurate enough to match your work. I found it was a little bit different from the book, again, because of printing and magnification and all of that. Uh, it's, because what's going to happen is if you don't get the angle correct, then it's going, the tube and the edge of the gusset will wander a little bit and then your holes will be off and maybe get too close to the edge because remember we need to respect edge distance half inch in when we drill holes. So we want this angle to be pretty much on and it's not a big deal. All I'm asking is that you measure your angle and then transfer it to the sheet of aluminum when you draw these out. So let's take an example for example. So the angle between here and here, I'm simply going to set my protractor to match as closely as I can. And it looks just about like that. So I'm adjusting the arm. I already adjusted it, obviously. And now it matches this angle between these two lines coming together. That's what we want our gusset to look like on one of its edges. So now we, we can read the angle. Mine says uh, 60 degrees, but it's easier also just to transfer it using this tool. So let's go over to a sheet of aluminum and transfer this angle and create 
this bracket, which I've already created, but we need three more, so I don't mind doing it again. We're going to make a four inch bottom, so I'm going to measure from here, and we're going to use the edge of the aluminum as our bottom since it is such a nice straight edge. So from this point to this point is our four inch bottom. Here is our protractor with the scale. I'm going to align it up along the bottom and then from this point I'm going to draw the line and this arm needs to be four and three quarters inches. I'm going to go ahead and measure that and put a mark four and three quarters inches is right there and I simply will connect this mark with our original mark down there. We don't even care what the length of that side is, it's whatever size it needs to be. And that's it. Now of course you might say that looks nothing like this but that's because we're not done with it yet. So just to review we have four inches on the bottom. We have four and three quarter inches along the side and our angle here is the 60 degrees or whatever size you come up with on yours. My guess it'll be the 60 degrees. And we can go ahead and cut this out. We're going to end up with some very sharp corners but that's very easy. I'm going to mark you simply take off each of these corners with your bandsaw, just chop off the corners and then you can round the points and you'll be amazed at how nice something like this comes out. So I'll go ahead and uh, cut this out. Here's what we got back from the bandsaw. Notice I've marked each corner. I'm going to use the bandsaw to simply chop off those corners and then take what's remaining up to the belt sander and turn them into round corners. And here's our piece after I rounded off the corners and we'll see how it fits. And it fits very nicely. What's interesting is that this will of course also work on the other side by simply flipping it over and that's because if you drew this accurately the angle on both sides will be identical. So we need four of these and then we can move on to the next step. Each leg on each side of the landing gear is a one inch with the 058 thousandths inner wall and these are also sleeved with a, in this case, a 7 8 inch inside. So I cut this piece to 17 inches, of course the same with the 7 8 inch piece also, because 17 inches is more than enough, it's definitely extra, because we're going to end up trimming this. Now our attachment point up here, of course, is the stainless steel bracket and we're going to insert it in here. The only thing that might be a little troubling is the fact that there is a bolt and nut at the end here and all that means is that we're going to have to file away a notch in here which is fine to be able to get this up as far as we can minimum half inch but if we can get further that's fine and then after we get that set up, we can come down to the bottom and we have a familiar cut to make, an angle cut. And of course, that angle is not new to us. We can use our protractor, because it's the same angle when we made the gusset, and cut across so that it fits neatly inside the axle up here. So my first step is going to be getting it to fit inside here and drilling a hole for the upper attachment point. We want a straight hole all the way down and through. What's nice about doing this first is once this is affixed inside this bracket, 
it won't rotate anymore, which will make it a lot easier down here to set the angle and you don't have to worry about it wandering or rolling in that case. So I'm going to make a notch in the tube and get it to fit up inside here. And of course the hole we mark has to be at the very top of the tube in the very center. And we can use our drill press to make that happen. Here's a technique for making a notch, a good looking notch. I'm simply drilling into the end of the tube and then I can file away the corners and I got a nice round notch in there. J just an idea. So with our notch, just following our template and then we will mark the very top of the tube check the edge distance and drill all the way through using the drill press and here is our finished product and we're going to use our quarter inch bolt to pin it in place Now down here is where we need to make a line to cut this at an angle so that it fits nicely right on top of our axle. We can also put our axle on top of the tube to help us identify the angle that needs to be cut. And that was a simple cut on the bandsaw. And by just following the template, and that's just about done. I need to maybe take a little more off because this is the bottom of the axle and I need to take just a little bit off. I can take that up to the sander to do that. Notice that we have a one inch and a seven eighths inch tube so when we put our gussets on, we're going to make up the difference with some washers so that the gusset eventually sits flat on here. Now we know when drilling through a tube, it is very difficult to hold the tube steady when we're trying to hit our mark right on the top, no matter, no matter how hard we push down, it still has that tendency to roll and the drill bit will slip. So for those of you who are not familiar with the V-block, this is a simple device that has a V and the idea is, is that the tube sits in the V and as you push down it becomes very stable. It almost self-locks into place and that way when you go to drill, it holds it very steady and makes drilling much more easier so that the tip does not slip away. I still punch my location and it's very important to get this all centered directly under the drill bit. And here's the top leg of the other side. We have our notch our hole and we'll temporarily pin it with a bolt and then down at the bottom we need to make our cut axle on top of the line and then we'll make the cut going across and after drawing my line, I'll take this over to the bandsaw and cut it. You also should mark the very top of the tube so that when you slide it through the bandsaw, you're keeping it oriented at the top. So I'll put a little point there. So that point lets me know as I slide it through the bandsaw that that is the top so I don't get it rotated 
and get a strange cut. Now it's time to think about adding our gussets to the connection down here. Notice I have pre-drilled the holes. When laying out the holes, look at your plans. Notice the important thing is that we have a half inch edge distance. So that gives the full strength of the gusset and the fastener. And then I laid out the holes as per the plans. Now, of course, this is going to lay on top of here. Notice I have shimmed up this tube because remember, I'm using a 7 8 inch tube and a 1 inch tube. So I'm going to shim it up for now. And then our placement. Now, these holes need to fit into the center of the tube. These two will go here, and then these two will go along this tube here. So how do we find the exact center of these tubes? And of course we learned that in our previous video. We use a block either made of wood or the 3D printed type that allows us to slide it along and we can stick a pen in here and we will always get the exact top of the tube. Oops, and we need the larger block. Notice I have one for uh, three quarters, or seven eighths rather, and then one for the one inch. So remember, this tube is attached at the top where we bolted it in temporarily to our bracket so it cannot rotate. And so we can get the exact top by putting our pen in here. This one at the moment is loose, but once we draw our line, we'll want to make sure that we transfer that line all the way to the other end so that the top of the tube is the top here as well as on the other side. I'm going to carefully mark these holes for drilling. I'm only going to drill into the first wall of the tube. I'm not going to drill all the way down because before I even do that, I'm going to make sure I have four matched sets of these gussets. In other words, I want to drill these holes through all four gussets first. That way they will be matched, drilled, which means I can place an identical one underneath and know that the holes will be in the exact right position. So make sure you have four of these all drilled at the same time before proceeding with your drilling here. Also, before drilling, you want to take a double check of the following. Is your center line on your tube lined up with the center line down here? Because you don't want it shifted one way or the other. And likewise, double check your positioning and center line of your cross tube. Check all of that first before drilling the gussets. And of course, I'm only going to drill up to 1 8 at this time to make sure everything lines up. And of course, we're going to repeat for the other side. One strategy I used was to drill one hole using the drill press all the way through, one hole on each tube, and then the other hole I used, I located by placing the gusset over and then drilling through the hole with the hand drill because that also accurately locates the hole once you've got one hole in each tube located. And then when we have all of the holes with the 1 8 hole, 1 8 inch hole drilled all the way through, also note that a pair of washers will take up the difference in thickness between the thinner axle and the thicker leg tube. Now before we open these up any further, we want to insert the axle 
into the end, which is a solid piece of three quarter inch. We're going to insert this until three and a half inches remain sticking out. This is a solid axle and this was this is being chosen based on the wheels and the bearings we're using which we'll show next and we'll insert this until approximately three and a half inches are remaining and of course that means that we will then once again drill through the eighth inch holes all the way through and this will then be in place for when we enlarge up to three sixteenths and then one quarter with all of the holes. And when things look good, when the gussets are on both sides, now we can drill up to 3 16 and then our quarter inch. As I updrilled each one to 3 16 I pinned it temporarily with a 3 16 bolt and moved on to the next one. And then of course we're going to move up to quarter inch. Once all of the holes have been drilled out to quarter inch, we can then disassemble and deburr all of these metal pieces and then reassemble with the proper bolts. Be sure to label all of the components so that we can get them back together in the proper order because many of these parts are identical to each other and there are a few brackets we're going to add before reassembling. Now on each corner at the gussets we have two items we need to add. We need another stainless steel U-bracket and that will go at the corner here. Now this has to be the back side of the landing gear, in other words towards the rear of the aircraft. And we will add this to the corner bolt, same bracket used on both sides and we're going to leave it not super tight because ultimately after we attach the landing gear we're going to have to adjust this because this will take another tube which will brace back towards the fuselage. Then we also need a stainless steel tang here because we're going to use a wire brace and this can actually go on the other side or the front side if you so desire, it won't really make that much difference. So if you want to put this on the other side, you could do that on the front side. Check your plans. Either way, it's fine. So to get the full picture, even though I haven't tightened everything up, we're also going to have a stainless steel tang up here. It has two holes, quarter inch holes. And again, this could be the front of the landing gear, or it could be the rear. But the idea is we will have a wire brace going down to the opposite corner here and the same with over here to this corner. And we'll show how to make up those wire braces. Before bolting everything up, let's go check out the fit of our wheels onto the axle shaft here so that we know that that's going to fit nicely before we bolt everything up and it'll make it easy to slip on then at the very last stage. The wheels we selected for this ultralight were the Azusa 5 inch wheels with bearings and remember my axle is a 5 8 solid bar and so that is also the axle size so I put on a aluminum bushing this is just made out of my 3 quarter inch tubing and that allows this to fit and that to fit of course this will be bolted together and then I drilled a small hole using the drill press through the end and then another 
three quarter inch bushing from a tube and that way I can put a cotter pin in and that will keep the wheel on and also make it easy to change the wheel so I'm going to assemble these basically there's a tube and then a tire and then these bolt together with three bolts and that should make it a relatively easy operation and once I assemble these we will weigh them because that will be useful information in case we're looking for weight savings we have a reference number to compare it to so we'll do that after assembly been a while since I've seen small bolts with slotted head heads for tightening that certainly prevents you from over tightening and then captured nylock nuts on the rear and away we go and we can weigh our wheel assembly with tire and it comes in at four pounds three ounces so that's for each one so we have over eight pounds of just the wheels alone here are the part numbers for the tire tube and wheel so in our next part we'll get our cable bracing all installed and get this thing on the fuselage until then Everyone, everyone, back to building.